Hello everyone, Aria here, Pop Pop here. Thank you very much for joining me once again as we well, hold hands and walk into the abyss as we explore the question of whether or not the worst monsters are no longer hiding in the darkness but out there in the light of the technology beaming right into our faces. Today we're covering another chilling case where technology and tragedy intersect. However, unlike so many of our stories, there is no mystery or monster here. Instead, we have an accident caused by what happens when an online persona invades the life of the person who created it. Cosplay is an escape for many, the chance to find safety and joy in the body of someone else. The internet has made it easier than ever for people all around the world to find community in fandoms that once may have isolated them. But what happens when the lines between fantasy and reality become blurred? Today, we're discussing the story of two friends and the terrible tragedy that ruined one's life and ended the others. The earliest hours of January 17th, 2021 were like many others that Helen Hastings and Mary Ann Oliver Snow had shared. They were spending the night with their other roommates and friends, joking around, smoking, drinking, and of course, watching Gotham, the show about Batman's origins as a young Bruce Wayne and his hometown. Then a terrible, preventable accident occurred. Hastings and Oliver Snow were brought together by their love of fandom. Hastings, an intelligent, friendly extrovert, met Oliver Snow while they were still in high school. Oliver Snow was a few years older and a celebrity on the Houston cosplay circuit. Oliver Snow would eventually amass well over a million followers on TikTok as Yandere Freak. They became famous for cosplaying as Junko, the main antagonist in the Danganronpa video game series. Junko is a villain who alternates between sweet and caring and violent and controlling. She's the perfect example of the Japanese yandere trope that Oliver Snow took their TikTok moniker from. Yandere are loving, but often driven to insanity by their devotion. According to some, Oliver Snow identified with this archetype and even more so with Junko, referring to themselves online as the IRL Junko Inoshima. Oliver Snow and their friends reportedly sometimes became different identities or alters. For Oliver Snow, these were usually anime villains. They kept a public list online of the alters that shared their system, or rather body. Although these associations would seem to suggest Oliver Snow was suffering from Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DID. It's unclear if Oliver Snow or any of their friends had actually been diagnosed. The fact that Oliver Snow identified so closely with the violent Junko disturbed some close to Hastings. Others believed Oliver Snow and their friends claiming to be certain characters only reinforced harmful stereotypes about the cosplay community. The term cosplay, a combination of the words costume and play, was created by a Japanese Japanese journalist in the 1980s. It generally involves fans dressing up as their favorite characters and attending conventions, parties, and meetings or creating online content. Cosplayers can spend countless hours and hundreds or even thousands of dollars on their costumes. Even though the industry was negatively impacted by COVID due to restrictions on gathering, its market is still expected to reach $23 billion by 2030. The rise of social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok have given cosplayers a bigger audience than ever, leading to a whole new industry of cosplay influencers. But what brought Helen Hastings to cosplay had nothing to do with money or clout. You see, after being bullied for their identity, Hastings attended a convention with a friend and was enamored with the con. They came for the costumes and craftsmanship but fell in love with a tight-knit community. Cosplayers are often misunderstood by the outside world, who might assume these people cannot tell where their characters end and they begin. But many of those who participate push back against that notion, instead saying that what they do is not that different from what actors do. Psychology professor Travis Langley described the process of becoming a character as people unleashing something that is part of themselves. When you are wearing that costume, you are not escaping. You are letting a part of yourself out there for people to see. Many find kindred spirits in others at conventions, sparking collaborations and friendships they wouldn't have otherwise. They describe it as a supportive community where people are accepted for expressing themselves. I personally haven't been to a cosplay convention and actually haven't spent too much time with the cosplay community, but as someone who has spent time with other fandoms and communities, both you know, in my own interests, you know, fandoms are in my own interests. Who here was a Whovian like me back in the day? Uh, but also, you know, I've spent time with furries. I've spent time with juggalos, and you know, of course, these are all very different communities. And I'm not saying that a furry is the same thing as a you know as cosplayer. But you know, these are people that you know, th just the idea of community around a shared interest has always been really fascinating to me. And I'm always been very supportive of people being able to to find safety in a community, especially some of these more marginalized communities like 
furries or juggalos, you know? I, w I don't want anyone in the comments talking trash about my friends, the furries, or even the juggalos. A couple of years into their time in the cosplay world, Hastings became friends with Oliver Snow. Oliver Snow, as mentioned before, was already well known on Houston's cosplay circuit. They were frequently seen at conventions flanked by their clique of friends. They had this it factor. They were very fabulous, very outgoing, said someone in the community. But they also warned that Oliver Snow had a dark side. They were often accused of creating drama with other cosplayers, lying to get an ex-friend's panel cancelled, ripping off someone they sold a wig to, and they were criticized for bringing real weapons onto the floor of a convention. In 2019, they received backlash for a provocative video they made on top of a gravestone. They apologized on TikTok Live saying, I didn't know there were so many goddamn rules in a graveyard. I still don't understand why it's wrong, but I'm not gonna do it again. Yeah, not, not a good take. But Hastings would defend Oliver Snow. They knew Oliver Snow was complicated, but remained loyal. Hastings was not the kind of person to speak badly about anyone, and Oliver Snow had supported Hastings when they were struggling through an abusive relationship. Even now, Hastings' family says they believe Oliver Snow cared for Hastings. However, Hastings' mother believes that Oliver Snow may have been a bad influence on the younger Hastings, as Oliver Snow and their friends frequently drank alcohol and smoked marijuana. Allegedly, Hastings' new friends encouraged them to drop out of high school, which troubled Hastings' mother. Two weeks before leaving for college, Hastings moved into the home Oliver Snow shared with their friends. Hastings' parents thought that their friendship with Oliver Snow was part of a rebellious phase, one that would end. Hastings had what was, by all accounts, a great first semester at Oberlin College. They posted less on social media, but they made new friends and studied art, psychology, and neurobiology. However, due to COVID-19, Oberlin students were sent home in November 2021. Hastings returned to Oliver Snow's house in Houston, where they would continue to take classes virtually and visit their family outside. It was just after midnight on January 17th, 2021. Hastings, Oliver Snow, and five other friends who lived at Oliver Snow's house were hanging out and drinking soda and vodka. While watching Gotham, Oliver Snow reportedly said they had a gun like the Batman villain, the Penguin. The gun had been left at the house by an ex-boyfriend of Oliver Snow's. Court documents reveal the friends often played with the weapon, a Glock handgun. Because the ex-boyfriend had taken all the bullets, they assumed the gun was safe. One of the roommates who had witnessed the accident even said Oliver Snow took the magazine out, but due to the alcohol, Oliver Snow is not sure how it ended up back in the gun. They did not believe the weapon had any bullets in it. While playing with the gun, Hastings allegedly joked that Oliver Snow should shoot them. Oliver Snow put the gun to the left side of their head and the weapon went off. Hastings fell to the ground. Oliver Snow was shocked. Another friend took the gun away from Oliver Snow and attempted to compress the wound with a stuffed animal. The police were immediately called. However, by the time Hastings reached the hospital, there was minimal brain activity. Hastings, an organ donor, was kept on life support for two days before their parents made the difficult decision to end their life. According to police reports, when asked why the intoxicated young adults were playing with a gun, one of the friends said, because their friend group is wild, dumb, and does jokes all the time. One day after the accident, Oliver Snow was taken into custody and charged with manslaughter. They were released on bail a few days later and posted to their TikTok saying they would be taking a hiatus. However, just a few weeks later, they returned to the platform announcing their hiatus was over. At this point, many, including Hastings college friends, were not aware of how Hastings had died. Oliver Snow returned to posting their standard and often violent content with fake blood on themselves and their backdrop. In one video, they lip synced to Mads Buckley's The Red Means I Love You, a song from the point of view of a My Hero Academia villain Oliver Snow cosplayed as. Oliver Snow wrings their hands as they sing My insides are red and yours are too and the red on my face is matching you. Goodness, you're bleeding, what a wonderful feeling. You're down and you're pleading, my head is just reeling. It should be noted that much of this content is presumed to have been recorded in the same home where Hastings was killed. Oliver Snow also continued to attend cosplay events and collaborate with others. At a Houston convention in the summer, Oliver Snow was reportedly publicly intoxicated which would be one of several violations of their parole. So was Oliver Snow showing a lack of respect and remorse for Hastings' death, or were they instead lost in the complicated grief that came from the accident? Their lawyer stated that Oliver Snow had not received any psychological treatment during this time, and Oliver Snow's family still 
had no idea they had been charged with manslaughter. Rumblings of what actually happened to Hastings began in Oliver Snow's TikTok comment section as early as July. But when court documents became public in September, their actions were widely ridiculed throughout the cosplay TikTok world. I don't even know if ridicule is the right word. I mean, I would kind of hope that they were condemned. The tragedy aside, just like they're there, the, the fact that they are so blatant and going online and po continuing to post the type of content they do uh, in this potentially the same place where this tragedy took, you know, occurred. I mean, it's just, it's, it's bad in my eyes. It's a, that's just my opinion. Some even said Oliver Snow was no longer welcome in their community. They were accused of making the entire cosplay community look bad. People found Oliver Snow's use of blood and allusions to violence to be disrespectful and irreverent. Despite them never referencing Hastings' death, some still felt they were trying to capitalize on the tragedy. Oliver Snow eventually deleted their account, but even fan pages dedicated to them still receive criticism. Some fans, though, still support Oliver Snow and defend them, saying Hastings' death was an accident and they must be living with unimaginable guilt. Their lawyer concurred, saying, Never at any point did my client think that this was a possibility of something that could happen. No idea whatsoever the gun was loaded and they've been devastated their close friend has lost their life under these circumstances. Oliver Snow themselves has not made a public statement regarding the accident. However, before deleting an alternate social media account, they wrote, I should have known better. Sooner or later, my luck always turns. I shouldn't allow anyone in the crossfire. A quote apparently from Danganronpa. The case and Oliver Snow's behavior afterwards provides an interesting juxtaposition of real life versus one's online persona. These were two friends who found each other beneath the affectionate artifice of the cosplay community. Yet, according to the police report, they felt comfortable handling the weapon because they were cosplayers, and that's what they did. Oliver Snow's behavior after the tragedy probes the question, did TikTok provide them with an escape from the reality of their actions, or was it the other way around? Did their online personas cause those very actions? The two worlds collided in the comment section where the community that had given birth to Yandere Freak could now only see beneath their wigs and makeup Oliver Snow. Now Yandere Freak has been deactivated and Marianne Oliver Snow will stand trial for manslaughter. I would love to hear, as always, your thoughts on this case. I'm sure many of you have different responses to this case, perhaps to some of my opinions on it, to other people's opinions on it. At the end of the day though, it's just an absolute tragedy. But as always though, I am very appreciative of your time that you're here with me, holding my hand and walking with me into the darkness as we cover these stories. And I thank you for your time and I look forward to seeing you next time. And as always, in the meantime, please take care and stay safe online.